The book is called Fundamentals of Data Engineering, and you two are the two co-authors of the book, Joe and Matt. Uh, Joe is holding up a copy of the coveted book right now. Somehow, he's managed to get a physical copy before it's even available. Don't know how that happened. <laughs> um, so uh, to kind of introduce this book, we've got a great question from Leandro Mora, who uh, asked me a question on Twitter. I mentioned on Twitter, as well as on LinkedIn, that we were going to be having you guys on the show uh, and that I'd be interviewing you about the book. And Leandro asked uh, this question. He said, there are many books written about best practices for data engineering. Uh, one of his favorites is Designing Data Intensive Applications, which also is an O'Reilly book. Mm -hmm. um, so Leandro wants to know, what new ideas are you guys going to expose in this new book? So I'd say, you know, my, my favorite book on data engineering up to this point has been Designing Data Intensive Applications. I think it's a fantastic book. Um, Martin Kleppman, the author, was actually one of our technical reviewers. So shout out to Martin for, um, uh, you know, reviewing our book. I, I would say when we wrote the book, we did survey the entire landscape of data engineering books. Mm -hmm. And what we found was, whereas I think there, there, were, there were some gems like Martin's book, which I think was very classic and, and stood the test of time, a lot of the books felt very ephemeral, like it was data engineering on platform X, Y, or Z, or, or tech, you know, using language, you know, ABC or whatever. And, and what the big question that Matt and I always had was, well, okay, I, th I think these, these, these books definitely serve a purpose in terms of teaching you um, tactics, you know, on particular platforms or technologies, but mm -hmm. there really wasn't a book that we'd found that taught you the, the, thought processes and a strategy behind data engineering in a, in a way that the book would remain fairly timeless over the years, right? So the, the challenge was, how do you write a book on a fast moving field that will be relevant um, several years from now, right? And when we pitched the book idea to O'Reilly, you know, they, they said, you guys are nuts. Um, like, why would you write a book like this? This is, this is hard. Nobody's written this for a reason. It's not because it's a bad idea. It's because it's a very hard book to write. Right. Um, so Matt and I, you know, um, being the gluttons for punishment that we are, said, OK, that's <laughs> cool. So we'll come back to you with a book proposal um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, flesh that out. And, you know, as, as far as we heard that, you know, the, the book was, uh, you know, once the book proposal was, it was in, it was greenlit. I think in some of the fastest time I, that our editor had heard of at O'Reilly because it's like, we really do need this book. Um, it was uh, Jess Haberman, the acquisition. Yeah, director, right? exactly. Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. Shout out to Jess. Awesome. Um, person. And, and so that's where I would say this book is different is that it, the new ideas, um, Leandro asks, well, the, the big ideas behind the book are twofold, right? So the, the first big idea is a data engineering life cycle, right? So the path that data takes through a, a data engineer's, um, you know, hands and capacity and so forth. But you also have to think of what, what undercuts that life cycle, right? And so we're talking about things like data management, ops, orchestration, architecture, you know, security and um, software engineering. So it's, it's really, I think the, the big ideas are, are actually the most simple ideas or have been hiding in plain sight the entire time, but I would say haven't been clearly articulated up until this point. Matt, what do you, what do you think about uh, Leandro's yeah, question? Yeah, I agree. And for this question, I'm actually going to loop back to the discussion earlier of the definition of data engineering. Um, I think in our data cultural milieu, there was this weird, um, there were a lot of bad definitions of data engineering floating around for years and years. And oh, geez, Matt, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for example, I think when I got started in this world, the definition of data engineering is, oh, a data engineer is someone who works with Hadoop and, and Pig and MapReduce and maybe this cool new thing called Spark. And then a few years later, it was like, oh, a data engineer is someone who works with Spark and maybe mm -hmm. Databricks or something like this. Mm -hmm. And none of that actually captures what data engineering really is about, which is about managing data flows and serving end users and end use cases. Those are technologies. Uh, Hadoop was useful in its day. Spark is pretty useful now. But mm -hmm. th those are tools. It's like saying a car is a clutch plus some um, pistons plus maybe an electrical system. That that doesn't get to what a car well, it is. Even it gets worse because it's, it's yeah. talking about brand names. So a car yeah, yeah. is a you know, set of Michelin tires or, <laughs> right, right. or, or you know, to bring it back to data science, like data science. How would you feel, John, if we said data science is um, the use of TensorFlow 2 with Keras 
and some scikit-learn mixed in on, you know, right. NVIDIA GPUs. I mean, would that would that be a fitting description of data that's science? A, that's a timeless definition, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it could be, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that'll be our next book. Um, just kidding. Yeah. So, but, but I'll, but I'll they, look back. But, Go ahead. Oh, no, but it felt like the definitions, I, I think what Matt was saying, you know, yeah. the definitions felt very naive. Like, it was very superficial, right? And so, um, um and that's that's what I felt like we needed to address because uh, the easy book to write would have been like data engineering with platform X, Y, or Z or language A, yeah. B, and C. Right? right. Yeah. Right. The the Martin Klutman book I, that's a fantastic book, and I want to give him a shout out right here. But what I'd say about that book is that it's intended for two audiences. So audience number one is Fang engineers who are working on a very specific. At one point, we called this primordial data engineering, which is actually working way down in the guts of tools. So you might have an engineer at Google who works on Colossus, their data storage system, and they need to understand clocks and synchronization and inconsistencies and such. And the second target audience for this book is people who maybe are working with Spark or Snowflake and don't need to worry about those issues day to day, but need to kind of understand them in the back of their mind. And that that doesn't, it, it's a, I think any data engineer should read it, but it doesn't really explain what the whole job is about. And so our goal with this book was to write a book that would kind of complement all the technical books that are out there to say, take what you learn from Martin, take what you learn from, you know, Spark fundamentals, and then bring it into this bigger picture of how you can actually serve data science, machine learning, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, John, to kind of bring it back to something you're probably familiar with, right? So and we, we both lift. And so I would say design data intensive applications is sort of the book about like how to, you know, how do muscles work and, and what, how, how do energy systems work, right? ATP fires and does stuff and there's, you know, different energy systems. And that's, I think, really the equivalent of designing data intensive applications, but it doesn't really get into, okay, so like, you know, lifting, like, how do you just go about like being a lifter and getting better at that, at that, right? That's, um, I, I would say is a really um, good analogy that maybe you might identify with personally because we're both meatheads. So <laughs> that's a lovely analogy. All of my meat loves it. Um, so thank you so much for telling us uh, about the audience because that was exactly what, what I was going to ask you next. Perfect. Uh, do you want to give us a bit of a rundown of the topics that are covered? So we've talked about why this book um, exists. We've talked about the audience. Um, and then, yeah, give us a rundown of the topics and in particular, maybe give us a rundown of the topics, uh, that might be particularly interesting to people who want to be data scientists or want to stay data scientists. They're not thinking about becoming strictly data engineers, but they want to have some more data engineering under their belt. Yeah. Um, so I would say our, again, our core audience for this book is data engineers, but the point is that as a data scientist, if you read this book, it's kind of like understanding where your food is coming from or something like that. And then, of course, not just understanding, oh, my food is farm to table and this restaurant tells me where it comes from, but also mm -hmm. how to communicate back to your data engineering stakeholders about your needs. Or in some cases, we see this often in a small company, you're hired as a data scientist and you actually kind of have to build a data engineering team. In other words, you have to help the company make that first hire to say, hey, we don't have people to build these pipelines so I can do my job. So this is the kind of person we need to look for to accomplish that task. And so we do feel like, you know, maybe a data scientist isn't going to be reading the book as deeply in certain technical areas, but they'll get a really nice picture of what data engineering is all about and why they should care and how it's complementary and how they can work together with data engineers.